first alert. Welcome to This Week in Kansas with your host, Tim Brown. Hello and welcome to This Week in Kansas. Thank you for being with us this morning. The latest budget plan from the House would close a roughly $400 million budget hole through a combination of sales taxes and other consumption taxes. This proposal would not touch many of the tax decreases for businesses that happened in 2012. The proposal would also include amnesty for taxpayers who are behind and allow them to avoid penalties as they catch up. Now, that's just one of the many plans that's out there. And I, as always, I want to remind our guests that we tape our show uh, generally on Thursday evenings, and we're doing this one on a Thursday evening. So, you know, things can happen on Friday or Saturday, and uh, we, we just don't know what uh, what might happen. But uh, we were talking to Jim Ward a few minutes ago. We're going to get him on on the, to start with here in just a, just a second. And it doesn't look like there's been a lot of progress made so far, Jim. Would that be an accurate statement, or, or are we heading in a positive direction? Uh, Tim, you, you underestimate. Um, it's worse than no progress. Um, oh, no. It's a stormy night in Topeka, both weather-wise and in the legislature. Um, today, we overwhelmingly rejected the governor's um, latest tax plan, like 108 to 3. And where we're at, um, the Senate and the House, the three people from the Senate and the House who are supposed to get together and negotiate the next plan are fighting over what time tomorrow to meet. Hmm. So the, the governor's latest tax plan uh, that uh, was was overwhelmingly uh, booted, what did that entail? Was that what I just read? Is that similar to it or, or not? Yeah. yeah. It's a massive tax increase, primarily hitting a little guy with an increase in sales tax, an increase in the cigarette tax, taking away virtually all of the middle class tax deductions, cutting the home mortgage deduction, cutting the property tax deduction. Um, it, it was overwhelmingly rejected. Can I ask Jim a question? Yeah, go ahead. Jim, obviously, I mean, as, as we read the papers, we know that a lot of the opposition to uh, the governor's plan is, you know, coming from uh, hardcore anti-tax, anti-government conservatives. Is there some portion of this group that are also incorporating into their arguments a realization that the sort of taxes that the governor's plan depends upon, uh, you know, overwhelmingly hurt uh, the middle class and the poor rather than, you know, business owners and the wealthy in Kansas? Um, I would say there are two classes of that kind of Republican. Um, there are those conservatives that have a foot in reality and understand there are essential services that need to be provided by the state and that we have to have a more balanced or fair tax plan. But there are a lot of what I call ideological conservatives who are anti-tax regardless of the damage it does to the state. In fact, the Senate is going to run a bill that will cut 6.8 percent more out of the state budget which is like 190 million more in school cuts to give you a feel for what that would do <laughs> to try to weed out this argument that somehow we can cut our way out of this huge deficit you know i i, I guess in russell we were talking before the show and this is where i just think there's a huge disconnect uh from our lawmakers right now and and i i, I don't i don't really understand this and and we talked two years ago two and a half, three years ago. Uh, and and I, I made the comment at that time, be careful what you, you ask for, because Governor Brownback, I think, got what he asked for. He, mm -hmm. he moved a lot of the moderate Republicans out. Um, the Democrats are an endangered species in Topeka. And he got a lot more, lot more uh, very conservative folks in, in the legislature. And, mm -hmm. and now he's, he's backed into a corner, even by his own standards. Right. He blamed the legislature for a lot of this mess, even though it was really his own making in the, in the start. Mm -hmm. And and now he's in a he's in a bind, and uh, we're all in a bind. The state's in a bind right we're, now. We're, we're, we're in a bind. Six days in, or something right? Like we're, that. we're we're in a bind because there is a, a constitutional mandate for them to produce something that is balanced. Yep. You know, I mean, can you imagine what we'd be looking at in Topeka if that constitutional mandate wasn't there? Uh, we would have people that would say, yes, revenues are absolutely plummeting and uh, essential services aren't going to be supplied. And that's good because that advances us towards the minimal government ideal that a lot of these folks have. But, you know, unfortunately, there are these required services that they have to fill. And because they have to make the numbers total out to zero, they're going to have to figure out some sort of way to bring revenue in. 
Uh, and this is very, very difficult for them when they got there, uh, you know, handpicked by Governor Brownback or by Governor Brownback's people, as the case may be. They got there by saying, we're not going to do that one thing. Um, it's, it's a very, very strange and, frankly, tragic situation that uh, Kansas is looking at here right now. The fact that, uh, as Representative Ward just mentioned, I mean, we were joking before about, uh, you know, why, why did they have to go over 90 days? Why didn't they propose something, you know, really, truly traumatic and simply say, yeah, and we're going to take 200 million additional uh, dollars out of the schools? And now I just hear that there actually is somebody who's talking about, well, you know, I, we could knock $190 million more out of education. Great. Well, you know, no marching band, no football, you know. No. Why not? Yeah. You know, Jim, it's, you mentioned um, there's even debate at this point as to when, when they're going to reconvene to discuss this. Is it going to be tomorrow afternoon, Friday afternoon, or, or when this will happen? Um, I think it will be um, around lunchtime tomorrow. Um, the problem is we really haven't fleshed out what the people on the House floor would be supportive of. So what they're doing is going through the reverse process of eliminating things. Um, it, it is just a bizarre scenario. And when this show airs, if the legislature is still in session, which I'm 99% sure we will be, that will break the record for the longest session in Kansas history at 108 days. I wonder when that record was set. I wonder how many um, years ago it was who, with a similar dynamic, fewer of extreme conservatives, but the same dynamic when Governor Gray's ended up raising the sales tax and the cigarette tax to get out of a budget, a much smaller, we're talking very small compared to what we're talking about today, but it was a similar situation where we had a okay. deficit and uh, we needed revenue. Yeah, but, but do people not realize when they look at this that we've cut taxes in one area, but we're just turning around and having to raise it in another area? That, what does that accomplish? Where, where have we actually accomplished anything positive? I mean, we cut taxes on business owners, mm -hmm. and business owners are happy about that. But have we have Not we just the taxes on the businesses, but the personal income taxes yeah. of the business owners as well. But yeah. we haven't significantly increased jobs. I mean, it, it, we, we've had people on the show, and we have Republicans who say, well, we've had an increase in jobs statewide. And, and while that is true, we're still being outpaced by the surrounding states. Uh, so it's just natural growth. This is not, you can't show the Laffer curve working because it's not, quite frankly, in the state nope. of Kansas. We don't have an 80% or 90% tax rate for wealthy people, which is when the Laffer curve has, has worked years ago mm -hmm. uh, for our country. Arguably. Uh, yeah, arguably, yeah. <laughs> Some would dispute that. Well, let's take a commercial break. We're going to continue our, our talk on budget and taxes. I want to pick Jim's mind a little bit more and, and kind of get the, the process of what's happening to people. We'll be back. How can you explain an invisible friend that makes our kids do things? The Whispers is the number one new drama of the summer. How do you fight what you can't see? The Whispers, all new Monday on ABC. A car gives you freedom. Room to grow. And in time, room to grow up. Your dream car evolves, and protecting it takes committed support. American Family Insurance. If you like quality and selection, you'll love Yoder's Ornamental Concrete in Burton with the best selection of fountains, bird baths, planters, benches, yard lights, animals, and figurines. You're sure to find the right piece for the right spot at your home or office. Since 1984, the Yoder family has been committed in making the finest of quality statuary, the largest statuary outlet in Kansas, located on Highway 50 in Burton, Kansas. That's Yoder's Ornamental Concrete. And welcome back. I, one of the things I wanted to talk about, we just discussed this very briefly during the break, was some of the procedural uh, happenings in Topeka. And it's, Jim, I, I think it's not, uh, you know, some people would say that's not very interesting. I, I find it to be quite interesting. Uh, and it's interesting how the process works. And we did something a little different this year. And you mentioned this, I think you alluded to this just a moment ago. We kind of passed things backwards. What have we passed and what are we waiting to pass? Um. There's three pieces to what you just asked him. First of all, we have dramatically changed the process. What traditionally has happened is there's a committee evaluation of bills. It goes to the floor where every member has a chance to amend it or present ideas. It passes out of the House and it goes through the Senate. Senators and House members always have disagreements, so we appoint a committee to work out the disagreements between the two bills that have been on the floor of both houses. 
This year we skipped all of that and sent bills directly to that meeting between three House members and three Senate members. And that really excludes all, about 120 of the 125 members of the House and um, about 35 of the 40 members in the Senate from meaningfully dialoguing on what their constituents want in the bill. The second procedural thing that they've done to make it harder for people at home to track is they move the important legislation from bill to bill to bill. So what started out as Senate Bill 1112 ends up in House Bill 2105 and then goes back to Senate Bill 302 and then it, and what that doesn't really matter to anybody at home other than it's very hard to keep track of the legislation. And the third thing is um, as a result you you're just shooting in the dark you're kind of guessing what you think will pass so you have to send several ideas to the floor to be voted down until you start to see a consensus bill in, in the negative which is either the things they voted against let's try this they haven't voted against this yet it's a really bad way to make law I mean that's it, it, I mean that's a fascinating description it is in some ways terrifying but it's also fascinating you know this idea that it, it's like people are so completely internalizing the dysfunction and, it, and it's not just you know uh, the kind of dysfunction that we see in Congress that we recognize as being a function of you know the influence of special interest groups in various committees and whatnot. No, this is the sort of dysfunction where it almost clearly exists along party lines, or you know, as was suggested, you know, within different groups within the parties. And so you have people like leapfrogging in a sense. It's saying, well, we don't know what we're going to end up with, but we know that we can do this now in the anticipation that uh, eventually this other thing will work itself out. They have no idea how it's going to work itself out, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's like these, you know, different cells within the legislature trying to, you know, outguess and, and jump in front of each other. Yeah, it, it's, it's just been an interesting and bizarre process to watch, Jim. One of the things that, that really kind of struck me with some of the debate that's happened is, is the tone that's being taken between even between Republicans, Republican to Republican, it's been pretty nasty at times. Uh, and, and some of the things that have been suggested have been just, just really kind of out of left field. You know, take nonprofit status away from from a lot of nonprofits, hospitals included. And again, I I'm a little biased there. Um, do take nonprofit status away from some schools, things like that. And it's just so so we're not going to make business for profit business owners pay taxes, but the nonprofit. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah. yeah. What's really happened is that we, Sam Brownback, brought Washington politics to Topeka in every way you can imagine, including government shutdowns, which furloughs start to happen tomorrow or Saturday. Mm -hmm. You see a much more combative, much more aggressive, much more take no prisoners attitude from all of the factions. And that's what you're talking about when you talk about the Republican on Republican in their caucuses and on the Senate floor, which actually did have a debate for a couple of days on taxes, it was brutal, even in a place at a time that we have pretty aggressive politics. That was brutal, what happened earlier this week and late last week in the Senate. That's Washington politics. It doesn't work in Washington. It won't work in Topeka. And it, it's uh, very dis disappointing. You know, also, I would imagine as a political scientist, this is, I mean, it's, it's, it's sad to watch it, the way it's, it's happened, but it's also probably fascinating to see just how the, the political climate has changed in Kansas over the past five years or so. And mm -hmm. we, we discussed this before the show. You know, Kansas was, I, I think, just in my opinion, we, you know, it's always been obviously a Republican state, a conservative mm -hmm. state, but uh, it seemed like there was a lot of, a lot of moderate uh, Republicans or conservatives that governed, and we had a lot of mo moderate governors, for example, and, and, and we, we seem to have a little bit, well, a lot more balance than we do right now. Mm -hmm. And with the purge that happened just a few years ago of the moderates, uh, and, and, you know, again, we don't see a lot of Democrats up at Topeka anymore. Right. Uh, it, it's been very interesting to watch how the pendulum has has moved, but even with the movement of the pendulum, the Republican Party is struggling here. Right. It's it, it is interesting, and you know there will be people that will you know there'll be grad students who will write their dissertation about you know the Kansas legislature from you know 2010 through 2014 and what happened and why it happened. Um, 
and there's a lot of different ways in which you can parse this. Uh, I am a little reluctant to endorse every uh, element of Representative Ward's you know, claim about Washington, D.C. politics. I mean, again, um, Washington, D.C., the federal government is a whole lot richer than Kansas. And so you see a whole lot more very, very specialized interest groups trying to uh, you know, shape legislation as it develops within the different committees. Now, it's not like that stuff is absent on a state level, but a state like Kansas, generally speaking, the different segments that clashed against each other trying to work out their own agendas existed within the political parties themselves. And you notice that when we talk about how historically there was kind of this nice balance in Kansas. You know, you had the Democrats, you had the moderate Republicans, you had the conservative Republicans. Now, I suppose some people could take a look at the chamber, they could take a look at uh, you know, the Kansas Policy Institute, and they can say, well, yeah, these are the special interest groups you're talking about, but w however you want to see it, the fact of the matter is, is that there was a shift in the basic party dynamics, and that throws things off, and that introduces a different kind of dysfunction in the state. I mean, they could eventually work it out, but how much damage is going to be done to the state as the years go by, as they kind of reach a new balance, as it were? It's, it's sad that we lost the old one. It, we're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, Jim, I want to talk to you kind of about, uh, I want you to get out your crystal ball and, and, and tell us what's going to happen here in the next few days, if you can. We'll be right back. Are you thinking about purchasing an RV or upgrading? Wichita RV can make your experience both affordable and memorable. Serving Kansans for over 25 years, our courteous, experienced, and factory trained sales staff will help you find your home away from home. Come see Bob and his team at either of our two convenient locations. East, just three miles east of Andover Road on the north side of Highway 54, or west at Mason Kellogg on the north side of the street. For more information, visit our website at wichitarv.com. If you think about it, the plumbing system in your house is really not so different than the plumbing system in your body. Over time, they both become less reliable. Nobody knows that better than the experts at Benjamin Franklin Plumbing. Hey, Chris, how's the uh, patient? Bottom's rusted out. Ugh. Point is, if you don't take care of your plumbing, your plumbing will let you down. This one's leaking. That is embarrassing. For maintenance and replacement programs, call Benjamin Franklin Plumbing. Hey, Mike, do you smell gas? Gas? No, not me. And welcome back, and I know Jim is polishing off the crystal ball right now. Before we go to him as he does something off, I do want to kind of continue our, our discussion just for a moment. Uh, as we were heading to the break, you mentioned that you, you don't think this is exactly like, like Washington, and I, I kind of want to get your thoughts on this, Russell. Maybe the difference here in the state of Kansas, particularly with what we've had happen in the last year or two, and all of these freshman lawmakers who, who really haven't, uh, they, they don't have the, 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 the experience and the, and the, the knowledge of of how to govern and, mm -hmm. and, and, and you know maybe some people would say that's a good thing I don't know I, I, I don't think it is um, but you have a lot of folks in there that, that may not have uh, a lot of institutional knowledge and may not have a, a lot of uh, a lot of know-how as far as how to get things through and maybe that's part of the issue here you know you very heavily into ideology mm -hmm. And, and not so knowledgeable or maybe don't want to be yeah. so knowledgeable and just how to govern. That's a, I mean, that's an additional variable to throw into the pot, and it's an interesting variable. Um, you know, a, again, you, you take a look at uh, national government, or you take a look at state governments in very, very wealthy, very large states, California, New York, you know, that sort of thing. Um, there, a, a, a lot of people do, in fact, in a sense, depend upon special interest groups because they're the ones with the information. They're the ones with the institutional memory saying, you know, this is the history of this law. We need you to help us with this thing and this thing and that thing. When you have a crop of senators in a state like Kansas where the primary actors are very locked in to a goal of ideological transformation within a political party itself. Not so much because we have some specific interests in regards to, you know, business income tax we want to uh, forward, but we want a whole sense of government to push forward. Uh, that's going to result in, well, I mean, you could be mean about it and you could say it's going to result in a lot of people that, you know, join the cult. Um, if, if you don't want to go that far, you could say this is a lot of people who come to depend very, very strongly on a quite specific ideological base for their information. Um, 
you know, again, uh, eventually a new balance will emerge. Yep. Eventually these people will have been in Topeka for 15 years and they will have gone through these things and, you know, a, a new way of doing business will uh, come forward. It, but uh, are we going to be broke by then? <laughs> well, we're broke right now. Jim, uh, let's, let's get out the crystal ball. What's going to happen here in the next couple of days? You, you mentioned that you are fairly certain by the time this thing airs Sunday there still will not be a, an agreement. We're that far apart. Uh, what's going to happen? Well, first of all, uh, the, those people that Russ was just talking about refuse to acknowledge the biggest problem, the largest tax loophole in state history where 333,771 people who use services and demand excellence pay no state income tax. The next thing that's happened is the governor's issued a veto threat saying, if you touch that tax plan from 2012, I will veto the bill. The third thing is the Americans for prosperity have begun doing mailings in individual legislative districts opposing any tax increases. They also have and then you, commercials on the radio. I've yeah, yeah, I've heard right. some. And, and so you put all of that on the table, you reinforce those folks who say do nothing. Um, it reduces the number of people that you can get 63 and 21 for, and no one looks like they're ready to blink yet because there are significant political consequences for the team that blinks first. And so I, I really can't give you any idea when this is gonna end because usually as you get to the end of the session, you start to feel the parts that are gonna be and the pieces that will be in the final plan. And people start talking about the same things over and over again. We haven't even begun to get there because until you get there, you can't talk about how much of that, and how much of this and where should we take. We aren't there yet. There, there's still just people throwing out their political positions. You know, I, I, I don't remember, Jim, if we talked about this on the show or if it was right before the show, but, you know, one of the things that I, I think had a few people scratching their head, we have you know, Ty Masterson was, I think, made a trip to, to Galveston. Somebody else took a cruise uh, in the middle of this, and, and quite frankly, it, I think it made a lot of people mad. I don't blame him. It made us mad up here, too. Um, all of us are up here um, working, and it, it should take the full team. You shouldn't be able to take a, a week off to go on vacation. You asked for these jobs. You knocked on your neighbor's doors to get these jobs. You've got the job, and this is what the job is, is sludging through this battle until we get to a resolution that balances the budget. Fair taxes that pay the bills. It doesn't seem undoable, and we did it for 160 years. We can do it one more year. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Let's take another commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the new gun bill. We'll be back in one minute. It was just so easy to work with people from Kitchen Tuna. I thought it was beautiful. I thought Kitchen Tuna did an awesome job. And what I liked about it was it was on budget, and obviously it's beautiful. How can you explain an invisible friend that makes our kids do things? The Whispers is the number one new drama of the summer. How do you fight what you can't see? The Whispers, all new Monday on ABC. It's Mattress Firm's Sleep Happy Summer Sale. And for 72 hours only, get the hottest deals on the coolest mattresses, like Sealy Firm Queen Sets for $299.99 or Beauty Rest Firm Queen Sets for $499.99. And get interest-free financing for four years. Plus, get up to $300 in Mattress Firm Cool Cash with purchase of an Optimum, Tempur-Pedic, or Beauty Rest Black Hybrid Mattress Set. Good towards free delivery, free accessories, and a free frame. So don't miss Mattress Firm's Sleep Happy Summer Sale. And, and welcome back. Jim, I, I'm going to break format for just a minute because we had a question during the break that I think needs to be answered. It's an important one. Uh, the furloughs for state employees, Jim. I know the, the Democrats had proposed kind of a stopgap measure to keep state employees working for a while. Anything happen with that? And if not, will we be seeing state employees out of jobs here pretty soon? Uh, we will. I think the governor is in the process of identifying essential and non-essential personnel. And you're going to see over the weekend non-essential personnel be told not to come to work on Monday. Monday's an important day because that's the first day he would go to work and get paid out of the next fiscal year's budget, which isn't balanced and isn't ready to go. Um, the question I've been asking today is under the federal system, when they shut the government down, they always run a bill to pay state empl or federal employees um, back pay for those days that they were furloughed from their work, not for anything they've done. Um, so that is not a threat. That is a reality in the next few days on the next week. Well, wow. that helps. How, does, how does that help the economy? 
You know, no, no. it's just, it just crazy. Though it may enable, I mean, he says it's going to be non-essential employees, but I, I can't help but wonder if, you know, Brownback and some people on his team will say, oh, this will be our chance to get rid of uh, some judges. <laughs> <laughs> well, judges get paid separately, though. Ah, uh, that's true. They get paid that's separately. So he's, I don't he's not going to be able to get rid of them quite so easily. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go to the gun bill. I apologize, first of all, to the people up in the booth who are trying to follow me around and to the viewers at home. We're not following much of a format here. The gun bill, though, is, is important, and, and that's something that, uh, that did happen. Right. And Russell, if you can give just, us a Just real quick quickly, I mean, the way I look at it, uh, you know, there were two parts to this gun bill. Uh, one, I think, was eminently sensible, and one I found deeply frustrating. The, the sensible part of it is the fact that they were, you know, correcting some bad language in a previous bill, and by so doing, they're going to enable the sort of gun rights that are enjoyed by citizens of Kansas to be enjoyed by people who at one time had been convicted of a crime but had fully paid you know, they're due to society. And I think that's very appropriate. There are a lot of people who, you know, maybe they get in trouble with the law when they're kids, but you know, now they're 50 years old, they have children, maybe they have grandchildren, they want to be able to take them out hunting, you know. They, they ought to be able to enjoy the same ownership rights. At the same time, they also put into this bill yet another slam against Kansas's municipalities and cities and townships by, you know, taking away from them the sort of responsibilities that cities have traditionally wielded to, you know, be able to establish rules by which, uh, you know, museums and schools and, and government buildings can decide whether or not, uh, you know, uh, people can openly carry within their premises. Uh, this government has very, very continuously shown almost no respect for the ability of cities to govern themselves. Almost any time, maybe every time something has come up that uh, maybe puts the powers of cities against the agenda of the Republican Party, they've never said, well, let's leave well enough alone. They've always said, no, we need to take that power to Topeka rather than leaving it in Wichita or and, Hutchinson or wherever. And, and this is the, the small government party, I thought. Yeah, yeah, interesting. <laughs> Jim, I'm, I'm going to let you jump in on this one, and I, I have a feeling I know which way you're going to go with this. It's on the tee for you. It's like a, a, we just teed it up. Yeah. Well, here's, and Russell, exa exactly right. It's a failure to understand that Wichita, the city of Wichita is different than Wichita County. Johnson County is different than Johnson City. And while we should protect the universal right of the Second Amendment, it's okay to let cities determine where you can bring your gun and how best that their communities will deal with guns and try to reduce gun violence and, and potential problems. It, it, it baffles me um, why the folks that can't budget balance a budget in 105 days today think that they know better what the city of Wichita should do on every instance, and that's very frustrating. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's an interesting again, Russell. I think it's one of those things. It's just a a very interesting snapshot of how our state is being run right now, and has been run recently. I mean, there's this you know certainly this this rhetoric of conservatism but to the extent that conservatism means a respect for local government and local tradition, traditions it's not really been respected by the Republican majority it's not been respected by Governor Brownback it definitely hasn't been respected by Secretary of State Kobach uh, yeah. when it comes to election law enforcement so yeah uh, it's, just, it, it's interesting to watch well we will keep our eye of course on on the budget and taxes it's you know, we've got, uh, we got a, apparently a long ways to go. So thank you for being on the program. Yeah. And Jim, thank you for being on the show as well. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please email me at thisweekinkansas at cake.com. We hope you have a wonderful week. If you like quality and selection, 